Hey there, everybody. Dr. J.P. Gidry here. I want to uh, film a short video. Um, I saw a, an Instagram post by Phil Mickelson earlier, so, um, and I wanted to kind of address some of the things that he was talking about, some of the pros and cons of what he was saying, because there's some things that he was kind of off base on when it pertains to strength training, physical prep, speed training for golf. Now, obviously, Phil is a highly talented golfer, you know, a hard worker he's put in a lot of hard work there's a reason that he's at his age and still hitting it like he hits it performing it like he does so you know there's no question about that but just because you're a pro athlete just because you played a high level doesn't always mean you know what you're talking about um you know talent trumps a lot of things hard work trumps a lot of things especially a lot of misguided work and exercises so a couple things he talked about is number one he's a pro of this video that he made and it is if you're going to be doing speed training super speed any type of over speed training I apologize I just finished my workout so I'm a little out of breath here um, you want to be strength training and probably want to be doing some strength training first to build a base before you go real hard at it so he does talk about this which I'm definitely on board with and um, is a necessary thing now when he gets into the details of this he discusses a six-week injury prevention process which is frankly very off base so you're not going to get stronger in two weeks you're not going to get more powerful in two weeks um, and this doesn't have to be an either or thing and then we could go down the rabbit hole of injury prevention but I'm not going to talk about today but let's just say there's no such thing as injury prevention but if you want to reduce your chance of injury from speed training yes you need to be doing strength training you need to be doing it for a period before you started if you haven't done anything and you still need to be doing it simultaneously while you're doing it Second thing he talks about is some of the examples of his strength training. So he talks about push-ups on a TRX, single leg squats on an unstable surface. Push-ups, single leg squats are two great strength exercises. Adding instability to them takes away from the strength benefit of the exercise. So anytime we add an unstable surface, we decrease our ability to produce force, which is the whole point of a strength exercise is to be able to increase our ability to produce force and produce as much force as we can especially into the ground, and we can't do that on an unstable surface. It also changes some of the firings and the motor patterns as well. But if you're trying to get stronger, which is if you're trying to reduce injury, it's the biggest thing you can do. Doing things on an unstable surface is not going to do that for you. You don't need more stability training. Balance, stability are trying to, the two probably most bastardized terms in fitness and golf fitness. You need to get stronger. You need a squat. You need a lunge. You need a deadlift. You need to bench press, push-ups, rows, pull-ups, overhead press, all these basic movements. You need to build stiffness through the core, but again, you're not going to do this through unstable training. You do this through heavy loaded chops, lifts, pile-off presses, um, things like med ball catches working and, and uh, cable catches working on deceleration, those type of things. And you're going to still, again, you're going to load these heavy. Um, you're, bu you're building your body's robustness, its capacity to both produce and handle force. You need to put a lot of load and a lot of challenge on it. Um, so those are kind of the big areas I wanted to address. You know, he's a big name. You know, I love Phil. I love watching him. I love what he's all about. And, you know, I think in the grand scheme of him, seeing him promote fitness, promote my TPI, and, and TPI instructors are all positive things. But, you know, unfortunately, his message is going to be delivered to millions more people than mine is. And... You know that some of that information that those people are going to be fed is is not entirely correct and frankly you know pretty off base for the goals of what he's talking about so if you want to do speed training you know i i swinging fast swinging fast with over with super speed clubs swinging fast at the ball are all things that need to be done if you want to increase swing speed but you need to have a strength base you need to be supporting that with strength training and true strength training lifting heavy weights in lower rep ranges and in the basic compound movements you need to be developing power through jumps med ball throws med ball slams olympic lifts things where we're trying to move a lighter implement a lot faster with maximum intent um, and all those things will help support your ability to create more speed on the golf course will help improve your ability to kind of reduce the risk of injury from training and from playing and practicing um, you know, and you, you, you definitely need to find somebody to work with, both from the swing side, the technical side, mechanical side, as well as, you know, from the strength and conditioning side. Um, but, you know, frankly, not all those people are created equal. You know, there's a lot of, you know, BS and kind of false narratives and things in, in, in the golf fitness community. It's gotten better. 
but there's still a lot out there, you know, and, and we know the basic principles of strength and conditioning work across the board. If you're trying to produce more force, there are certain principles you need to adhere to, and that's one of the big things we can do as golfers. If you're trying to reduce risk, especially from overuse injury, there are certain principles that we need to adhere to uh, to do that. You know, it doesn't matter what sport you're playing, what your goals are. So if you have any questions, comment below. Tag Phil, I don't care. I called him out on his coffee and got about a thousand messages from his fans. So, you know, I've been there, done that. So I'll, I'll take a thousand more if that's what has to happen. But, you know, I think at, my job is to educate and provide accurate information. And unfortunately, some of that is having to combat some of the misinformation out there. Uh, so everybody has a happy new year. And if you have any questions, DM me, comment below, email me at johnpaulgidrypt.com.